Here's your host, Alex Garrett. Ladies and gentlemen, you could have been anywhere in the world tonight, but you're here with us in New York City. Are you ready? I know I am. Hey, I'm Alex Garrett, your host for this episode. You know what they say, right? Oh, if the shoe fits, wear it. We wear that shoe proudly. Right into Libertarian Twitter, and that is where I start today, Alex Garrett Podcasting. Saturday sit down. Well, there's not really many sitting down with me, but that's okay. Uh, nobody's sitting down with me, actually. It's just me uh, talking about an interesting experience. Firstly, though, you can follow me at Alex G in NYC. That's Alex G in NYC on Twitter and on Instagram and Alex G in NYC Dot net and even more so a new email Alex G in NYC at gmail dot com that's Alex G in I N N Y C at gmail dot com so yeah I walked into libertarian Twitter you know a libertarian believes in economic freedom but also believes in social rights and so it's a mix of both it really is what I talked about a couple of weeks ago the purple state mentality where you can support ideals from both sides of the aisle, as crazy as that seems in today's world. Like healthcare, but not taxing everybody. Like women's rights, but not, you know, but not asking religious institutions to go against their beliefs uh, of abortion and whatnot. Anyway, at least that's how I interpret libertarian. I, I don't identify myself with them either, but I did find it funny that I ended up in libertarian Twitter, and maybe that was the right thing to be ending up in, because I do believe that we need to have a mix of both in all of our DNA and and understand both sides, and I also am very impressed by Jo Jorgensen. She was the libertarian candidate, first uh, nominee for president. Do you know what she did here in the 2020 election, she garnered one more than one million votes, and she's a Clemson professor, by the way, at Clemson University. She's a she's a lecturer. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Because she did not want to push mixed politics and professing and being a professor, which I think is very admirable, and it's why she probably gained a lot of respect uh, outside the classroom. Partly, anyway. Um, She's on pace. She was on pace at one point eight, one point one percent of the national vote, pulling votes away from both Donald Trump and Joe Biden. How many would you would you say? At least thirty eight thousand four hundred fourteen votes, according to the AP in Wisconsin, which President Trump roughly lost by twenty thousand. Uh, how effective was she as a candidate? And, and and disrupting the de- Republican Democratic system, try 1.6 million votes. Most ever for a Libertarian nominee. So if you are a Libertarian, congratulations. It seems that Joe Jorgensen, not the millionaire who m- missed the shot, Brock Pierce, uh, as a Mighty Duck kid. Remember that? He was young Gordon Bombay. He did not garner that. A professor from Clemson garnered that. So the libertarian movement made some noise, and maybe so. I've, I've always said there should be another party involved with this. Uh, I also believe the Senate and House must be divided. I think we have a one-party system in there. Regardless of at the top, I think that's bad. I think if they're a one-party system in the legislature where we need them to be separate, to hold them accountable, to do the checks and balances that we learned in high school and be beyond, that's important. We cannot have a two, a one-party system running our legislature. It, it just does not seem the way the Founding Fathers designed it. So yes, I hope Loeffler and I hope uh, Purdue win those seats in Georgia. I really do. Beliefs aside, I don't want to see this balance of power shift completely to the Democrats. I wouldn't want to split to go deeply to the Republicans either. I believe in a split nature. It's how we do balance each other out. And 
I mean, if we can't balance each other out in everyday life, right? If we're going to shout each other down on Twitter, at least let's hope for a split natural divide in Congress so that the House and the Senate can equally protect the American people and the Senate can hold the House accountable. And that's what the legislature branch does for America. And I'm sure the 1.16 million that voted for Jorgensen would agree that a split house and a split Congress is better than one party. It just, it does not work. Does not work. So, am I going to say, not the most votes, second most votes of ever, of any libertarian nominee ever at 1.6 million. Now, I commented that to someone who was a libertarian and called out to libertarians. I said, this guy's impressive. One million votes. You guys did something. But as you read the story of Joe Jorgensen, you see how she kept the politics out of the classroom. Now, we talk about indoctrination. We talk about how Basically, these campuses do cancel the other side. That's been documented. You know, the Shapiros, the Pragers, they cannot talk on a liberal campus right now without either fearing retribution, fearing being protested violently, or being canceled. (laughs) That's what it is. But she said probably the smartest thing I've heard a professor say um, who's at a mainstream school like uh, Clemson. Unlike many liberal professors who talk about their politics in class, I think it's egregious for me to take that tuition and that time spent to talk about my pet politics. I've never once mentioned my students inside the class or outside the class, hey, I'm running for president. That's admirable. And no wonder 1.1 million people got behind her. I, I do believe I personally was meant to walk into libertarian Twitter. Because the purple state that exists, that made a difference on election night, pulling votes away from both Biden and Trump. 1.6 million, to be exact, if you think about it. That went to Joe Jorgensen. And behind it is such an ethics that you can't criticize her for that. You have to applaud her. You say, yes, don't invoke, don't inject your politics into the classroom. Just do what the curriculum is supposed to be. And don't go veering off and teach what you think the kids should teach, college kids should learn instead of what they're required to learn. And so I think this year, she calls a wake-up call. I call him more, I think... And she's a Greenville, uh, South Carolina resident, by the way. So congratulations to Joe Jorgensen for receiving that many votes. When or not, it shows a third party could exist. A third party could shake things up. And we do love movers and shakers on this podcast. We do love those who should be trending but aren't. And we bring those names into the forefront to your mind and say, yeah, hey, here, here's who, who I'm looking at today. Look up the name Anthony Capuano while I'm at it. An amputee who lost his leg in a train uh, incident. Survived. And 11 years later, saved another man from, I believe, in a car wreck or something. It was something to that effect in uh, New Jersey. Took off his prosthetic leg 11 years after having been amputated. He took off that leg and and hopped over to save the man. Anthony Capuano, New Jersey. Congratulations. That is adaptability. And those names should be trending today. That Joe Jorgensen broke up the political system in her own way. With uh, 1.6 million votes. According to the Associated Press. And then she humbly went back to her school and taught. And the whole process didn't even tell them, tell her students she was running for president. Because she didn't feel it was right. 
I wish other professors wouldn't feel it's right to spend the tuition to cancel the other side. Because if they spent more time on, you know, getting the other views in, that would help. That would be a great tuition uh, bargain if you actually had the other side on campus, not cancel them out. Not at all. And so how many of you listening are libertarians? How many of you believe in the purple state mentality? Uh, By the way, let me define it for you because I'm not sure you may know entirely. The libertarian idea originated with William Belsham in 1789, where, and as early as 1796, the word libertarian came to mean advocate or defender of liberty, especially in the political and social spheres. Libertarians are skeptical of the state power and authority, which means they should be skeptical that we're constantly told during this lockdown to not do anything. That is authoritarianism, I think. And there's there's like a whole school of libertarian. Some actually support capitalism and private ownership. Others actually support uh, anarchists or are anarchists or they consider themselves anarchists. They call it anarcho-capitalism. Look, I I know the libertine. Uh, I think I put a bad rap to that to that party. But I'm very proud that a third party did break up the system this year. And I would love to welcome more libertarians on to discuss the actual party. And so if you're interested, Alex G in NYC, Alex G in NYC at gmail.com would love to have you talk about what it meant to get 1.6 million votes in the libertarian line, the third party. Libertarians say the left has now corrupted what they proudly identified as. And they want government ownership of property now. And more controls. The libertarians recognize that. We don't want that. And so, where do you fall? Do any of you fall in the libertarian spectrum? There's so much complication to this party alone. Like, there's so many different things. And so, I think, at the end of the day, as I said, the Let's Say Hi campaign... Libertarians want that same idea to stay high, to keep the peace, even though they, they, they're they actually associated with anarchists, according to Wikipedia. I don't think that's all they are. I like how humble Joe Jorgensen is. Remember what Jill Stein did as a Green Party? She wanted to sue and all this stuff. She was never going to win against Clinton or Trump. At least Joe Jorgensen had the decency to go back to work. And work hard, as many libertarians do. They work hard to keep the money and they don't want to be taxed from the impressions I get. But I'd love to explore this topic more uh, after walking into libertarian Twitter. What kind of liberty? How is liberty defined to you? To me, liberty is defined as not being taxed a lot. The not in my backyard movement and liberty is defined as not mandating everything. But, as they say, recommending wear a mask, not mandate it. That's not freedom. That's not letting freedom ring. It's more like masking it up on a mandate. And then if they can mandate that, who else? Who knows if they can mandate? That's the fear I have. That they will find things to mandate that shouldn't even mandate. I mean, I'm glad that we got rid of the mandate for health care. No one should be required to pay a government entity. That's not how America works. Obamacare had its flaws and its ups and downs. But I'm sure libertarians would agree that it wasn't the best system. There were backlogs. That was bureaucracy. There were backlogs. The internet didn't even work the first couple weeks of the rollout. Remember that? I do. Kathleen Sebelius got fired because of it. So to me, that's what liberty is. Out of my hair, less taxes, and able to just grow and flourish in this America. That's liberty. That's what we just honor on Veterans Day, those who fight for that liberty. 
and don't let it get destroyed, taken over, demolished even. Yeah, I can call out when I think the police do get too much of a state feeling and, and become all dressed in that SWAT team outfit. That the police, not military. I still love the police, but I do believe in accountability when needed. And we all should be that. And we all should be proud that there's a disruptor out there from the norm. Always looking for the disruptor because they can shake things up. Uh, 1.6 million votes is not nothing. And clearly people wanted to shake things up. That's why they did it. That's why they voted for Joe Jorgensen and Brock Pierce. But I'd love to get these libertarians on and ask them what liberty means to them. Because it looks like there's a whole bunch of different meanings behind libertarianism. And I always think God asked me where I'm supposed to be. Maybe walking into libertarian Twitter is just what I needed right now to balance it out, to truly uh, sink in to that purple state mentality. Soak it in too. Because red and blue are the norm, but purple just is different. And that's why the purple states are different. And you got to love them, respect them. Embrace them even. And that should inspire us to embrace that, yes, if we like one side, we can stick to that side. It is okay. It is okay to say the governor of New York. It is okay to say the mayor of New York City. And it is okay to say President Trump all messed up. There's no reason why that's wrong or should be wrong. There's no reason why I believe in regulation for the big tech companies now if they're going to regulate us. That's not right. If they want to be free and open, its citizens should be free and open. You know how chilling it was to try and post that Hunter Biden story on the post when it got locked in and the story wasn't allowed to be posted? That was chilling. It wasn't just to say, look, they blocked me. This really hit me. Because I didn't, I haven't, we, you know, I haven't survived 30 years in America and haven't been able to thrive 30 years in America just to see our post be censored. And so, let's work away from the censorship. Let's hold censorship. And more censorship. Let's walk away from censorship. Let's regulate it. Let's hold these companies that make more than you and me combined accountable. Day in and day out. That does feel like a libertarian way. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm Alex Garrett. If you are a libertarian, let me know. Alex G in NYC. Alex G in NYC. Alex G in NYC at gmail.com. I'm there. We'll talk to you soon.